I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This, man, this month begins a new series for the evangelism ministry. The focus for this month is the essence of God's love. Love in Action series. There's a new evangelism teaching monthly on the first Tuesdays, beginning at 7 p.m. Via SFMBC Facebook and Southern Friendship MBC Ministry YouTube. I am Reverend Dr. Teresa Scott Woodruff. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your relentless and loyal acts of love toward us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Fill our lives and our days with that same love through your spirit that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith, that we may be rooted and grounded in love. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. God's love is unlike anything the world has to offer us. It is beyond anything we could ever earn or deserve. God's ultimate essence in, is love, and his love is perfect. There is nothing God does that is not done in love. He, incre he creates in love, he rules in love, and judges in love. God's love is both a fact and an experience. It is true whether we feel it or not. Don't get hooked on a feeling. The all-powerful God of the universe is so much more than a feeling. The evidence of his love for us is found in his word. God created everything for his glory. In fact, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. God has given us purpose and meaning. To whom much is given, much will be required. That's Luke chapter 12, verse 48. But something went wrong. The Bible calls it sin. When we sin, we break our relationship with God. And everything that was meant for good gets broken. Can we fix this problem? Broken relationship with God? Others have tried to build a bridge to God. We cannot fix the sin problem. God intervened because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is John chapter 3 verse 16. God's love reaches every dark crevice and fills every need. Despite our rebellion, God's love gives the power to forgive and to let go. It releases sin's hold and gives peace to the hurting. It is powerful and surpasses our own knowledge and understanding. It encompasses the length of our days before and all beyond. It reaches to the highest heavens. It extends to the deepest pit. God's love encompasses all. It does not matter where you have been it does not matter what you have done. It does not matter what you have experienced. It does not matter what you have thought about yourself or what others may have said about you. This is what God says about you. You are precious and honored in his sight. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 4. to do 
about such a seemingly hopeless predicament. God will provide a way out. Temptation is something we all face, no matter how long we have been following Christ. But with every temptation, God will provide a way out. No temptation has taken, overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Amen. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Your escape could be a phone call away. Your escape could be a prayer away. God will provide the way to, of escape. But we have to want to come out. Amen. One way to view temptation is to consider it a test. If we keep our eyes trained on Jesus Christ, we will pass the test and avoid the tendency to sin. The way out may not always be to escape the trial or temptation, but to stand up under it. Instead, God may be looking to strengthen and mature your faith. When you come face to face with temptation, instead of giving in, stop and look for God's way out. You can count on him to help you. If you have not and you want to express to God the decision that you have made to give your life to Christ, pray then like this. God, I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I understand that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I recognize that I must ask you to forgive me for my sins based on Christ's sacrificial death for me so that when I die, my sins will not keep me from the eternity with you. I receive this gift of your grace because Jesus paid the penalty for my wrongdoing. Let the Holy Spirit take up residence in me. Live your life in me. Amen. Celebrate what God has done in your life and what he has rescued you from. Look for ways to worship him throughout your day. Read God's word. It is his will for us to obey and do what it says. It is God's will that we should be sanctified, that we should avoid sexual immorality. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. That we may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 that we may always give thanks to the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Then we should act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. That's Micah chapter 6, verse 8. That we persevere so that when we have done the will of God, we will receive what he promised. That is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Spend a few minutes reflecting on this time with God. Create space to hear from him and what he has shown you. Thank him for his faithfulness and let him know where you need help. Seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and teachings of God's word, Sunday school and Bible study. Let prayer shape the way you live. You can approach God at times 
As a matter of fact, you can approach God at all times with confidence and trust. Prayer is and always will be a dynamic conversation with God. When we realize this, prayer becomes a freeing framework that helps us talk to God every day. Your heart and mind must change before you receive a restored relationship with God. It is being sorry for doing wrong, turning from it with God's help, and desiring Jesus as Lord. This is called repentance. The Lord is patient with us, not wanting any one of us to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. It is John chapter 15, verse 15. If you truly trust Christ, do all you can to be his friend. Get involved in a local Christ-centered Bible-believing church and let someone there know that you have recently trusted in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they can help you grow in your relationship with him. You may contact the Southern Friendship Missionary Baptist Church office at 301-702-0100. God is love. That's 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. This is the most fundamental thing to be said about God, for it encompasses everything else that we can say about him. Amen. It is because of God's love that we are able to love. We love because he first loved us. It is 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. It always protects, love always trusts, love always hopes, and love always perseveres. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Your love for God is expressed by your love for people and vice versa. They are two sides of the same coin. They are inseparable. Love the Lord God with all your heart. That is Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Love God. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is Mark chapter 12, verse 31. Love people. There is no other commandment greater than these. some application. God's love versus obedience. Is there a difference between loving God and keeping his commandments? Read the following scripture passages, then write down your answer. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 12 through 14. John chapter 14 verses 15, 21, 23 through 24. Matthew chapter 7 Verses 24 to 27.
Fear the Lord your God. Walk in obedience to him. Love him. Serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And observe the Lord's commands and decrees. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 12 to 14. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. John chapter 14 verse 15. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. John chapter 14 verse 21. Everyone who hears these words and put it into practice is wise. Otherwise, they are foolish. Thus saith Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 27. The fountain of love rises up from the heart. Amen. Who we are perceives what we do. The deepest level of our being is love itself. It is our being, our true self within, that the fountain of love, that is the fountain of love, fully engaged with or our awareness and attention in whatever we choose to do. Fully engage in that. Amen. It is the present that has the power where we can act, receive, and be who we are here to be. Amen. Given that gift of being fully present with others and ourselves is the practice of love in its deepest form. God's love never ends. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Neither death, nor life, angels, nor demons, present nor future, nor any powers, height or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Let us pray. Lord, we establish our lives firmly in your love. Help us to let your love be the inspiration and motivation of our life and the foundation of all that we do, even when it seems impossible, even when it does not make sense. May our lives be filled with your goodness and power today and every day as we walk in your spirit of love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May the love of God continue to shine through you to others. You are loved.